take a good look at this MRI. Can you see what's wrong? Well, my goal by the end of this video is to get you to clearly recognize the anomaly even from a mile away. Hi, my name is Andy, and you're watching The Common Rounds. The topic we're going to go through today is Huntington's disease. I think it's quite a straightforward disease, as once you understand the basic pathology, all the key characteristics become really easy to remember. So, what is Huntington's? Huntington's is a neurodegenerative disease that produces a characteristic movement known as chorea. Chorea is when the body produces unpurposeful movement. Some textbooks refer to them as a dance-like movement, and if you add some twisting motions into it, they can be called chorea athetosis. So in addition to chorea, patients with Huntington's can also develop problems with their mood and also their cognition. So as the disease progresses, patients can also develop dementia and psychosis. So what is the pathology behind Huntington's? From what I've read, Huntington's disease affects the basal ganglia. More specifically, it's a degeneration of the caudic nucleus in the basal ganglia. In the basal ganglia, there are direct and indirect pathways that control movement. The direct pathway is in charge of increasing movement, while the indirect pathway limits movement. In Huntington's disease, the degeneration of that caudate nucleus causes an increase in the stimulus for the direct pathway and reduces activity in the indirect. This explains the generation of excess unwanted movement in the form of chorea. As the disease progresses, movements get worse, starting from small movements in the hands and eventually spreading to the whole body. Neuroscientists believe that the basal ganglia has four different channels, one for the body movement, one for eye movement, cognition, and emotion. So by knowing this knowledge, it explains why a degeneration in the basal ganglia not only causes excess movement in Huntington's, but also causes cognitive issues as well as mood changes. One giant breakthrough in Huntington's disease research was the discovery of this trinucleotide repeat located on chromosome 4. What this means is that on chromosome 4, there is this region where three nucleotides keep on getting repeated. These three nucleotides are C, A, and G, in that order, so I'll call them CAGs. A normal person has around about 34 copies of CAGs on chromosome 4, but in Huntington patients, they seem to find more than 40 copies of them. The interesting thing that they found was that the more copies a patient had, the earlier this disease presented. The average onset of Huntington symptoms is around about 30 to 50 years of age, and the more CAG repeats a patient has, the first symptoms could show up as early as in their 20s. As you can guess, these CAG repeats are passed down from generation to generation in the form of autosomal dominance. So in certain instances, when the second generation inherits more CAG repeats than the previous one, the disease progression could become worse. This is known as genetic anticipation. As most patients develop their first symptoms in their 30s, patients can be well into parenthood before they realize they have the disease. This effectively passes the disease on to the next generation without the patients intending to. So, what kind of tests and investigations can we perform in Huntington's to find out before symptoms develop? From what I know, there are genetic tests available to count these number of CAG repeats on chromosome 4. These tests could be useful in patients who have a strong family background of Huntington's and help identify those at risk before symptoms show. Once symptoms do develop, there are diagnostic tools such as CTs and MRIs to look at the patient's brains. So, this brings us back to the very first image. Can you see what's wrong? Well, let's compare it to a normal brain. And by doing so, what you can see is that the fourth ventricle over here has become really enlarged. Remember that in Huntington's, it's a degeneration of the caudate nucleus in the basal ganglia. Now, the caudate nucleus is located right here. So if this structure shrinks, then the ventricle next to it would naturally look larger and become larger, as you can see in the image. This could be called an enlargement of the fourth ventricle, or also known as a dilation of the frontal horn. Unfortunately, at this stage in 2016, there are no treatments that cure Huntington's. There are also no medical therapies that we have to slow down the disease progression or stop it in its tracks. So all that is available are medicines to manage the symptoms as they develop. These could include antipsychotics for psychosis, dopamine antagonists for movement disorders, and the Electronic Therapeutic Guidelines of Australia recommends specialist advice when treating Huntington's. 
Now let's summarize Huntington's disease. Huntington's is a neurodegenerative disease that causes extra unwanted movement and at later stages mood changes and dementia. It's hereditary through autosomal dominance and can get worse from generation to generation through genetic anticipation as the number of CAG repeats increase on chromosome 4. The usual onset of Huntington's is between 30 to 50 years of age. To investigate this disease, you can order imaging techniques to look at the patient's brain for enlarged ventricles. While genetic testing is available to patients, the use of it in patients without a strong family history could be questioned. So as for now, there is no cure. All we can do is to manage the symptoms. If you want to review anything we've talked about in this video, here's a table of contents. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment below, or on Twitter. Thank you for watching the video. For more pathology summaries, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.